Have you ever made a body butter and it was beautiful and gorgeous and smooth and then you came back to it a few days later and it was all mealy and lumpy and felt like it had little bits of sand in it? It's a major bummer, but don't worry, it has happened to every maker at some point in time. And today we are talking all about why that happens and how to fix it and how to prevent it from happening in the future. So let's get started. Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and in the great wide world of body butters behaving badly, I think grainy body butters is probably the thing that I get the most questions about, and also the thing that I have had the most personal experience with. I have made quite a lot of grainy body butters in my day. I love formulating with butters, but they can be kind of princess-ish, kind of particular about how they are handled. Thankfully, making gorgeous, smooth body butters isn't difficult. You just need a few little tips and tricks and special techniques up your formulating sleeve and you're good to go. If you are new here, my name is Marie and I run Humble Bee and Me, both this YouTube channel and the blog. I am a formulator with diplomas in organic skincare formulation and organic hair care formulation from Formula Botanica, and I share new formulations and formulating information here on YouTube and on my blog at humblebeeandme.com and have since 2011. So Humble Bee and Me is actually turning 10, oh my gosh, in just a few months. So first things first, what is body butter? There's no really strong universal definition of body butter. If you went shopping and bought a variety of different products labeled as body butter from a variety of different places everywhere from you know the body shop to a farmer's market to Etsy, you'd find a pretty broad selection of ingredients. So for the purposes of this video and generally for the purposes of home formulators, a body butter is an anhydrous product, so it doesn't contain any water. It is primarily comprised of butter, so this can be true butter, so things like shea butter and cocoa butter, but can also be ingredients uh, known as pseudo butters. So these are ingredients that get their viscosity from hydrogenation, their solidity. So if you look at the ingredient list, you know, flip it over or you know, look at the inky listing on the website that you're shopping on, you'll see a hydrogenated vegetable oil uh, as one of the ingredients. And so that is a pseudo butter. But yeah, so that's a body butter. It is not an emulsion. It is an anhydrous product, so all made up of fats can contain fatty thickeners and hardeners, so ingredients like stearic acid and subtle alcohol, and can also sometimes contain hardening waxes like beeswax and candelilo wax. Now, how much you enjoy or find necessary to include these hardening ingredients will depend a lot on the ambient temperature where you live and the overall formulation as well. So there's not really a lot of hard rules and hard definitions. I usually tend to think, you know, if you're getting a lot of wax into uh, and hydrous formulation, you kind of start to stray more towards like balm or salve territory. But again, there's no really hard definitions here, but what we are talking about in this video is anhydrous formulations that are mostly butters. And so to start with, how do you know if your body butter has gone grainy? Uh, it's a little bit like a sour split milk, like you'll know. I I've got one here where I did everything wrong on purpose and it has gone mega, mega grainy. It won't necessarily be this bad. You will definitely feel it on the skin. You'll spread the butter on the skin and it oftentimes the, the description that I hear is that it feels like there's little bits of sand or little kind of beads in the formulation. So that's uh, generally when you're more common experiences, the size of those beads can vary widely. The ones in here are massive, um, but you can definitely get ones that are quite a lot smaller. You might also notice kind of a a mealy or sandy feel, but the general gist is it's not going to be lovely and smooth and creamy and uniform. It's just kind of like, you'll use it and you're like, ah, ugh, that's not, <laughs> that's not what I wanted. You might also encounter something like this where you kind of have like a, some solids in a body of liquid. Uh, and while there's definitely some graininess going on here, this is more a problem with melting. And I'll have more on that in another video soon. So why did your beautiful body butter go all grainy on you? Generally speaking, it's because it didn't cool properly. And this could be part of the original making process, or it could be because the butter was exposed to substantial enough temperature fluctuations that it 
kind of re-melted enough and then re-solidified in a poorly behaving way. And that is how I forced the super grainy one I showed you earlier to go grainy. I stuck it out in a sunbeam and let it melt and then I just brought it back inside and left it on the counter for a couple of days and whoo wee Ugh. The oils and butters that we create skincare products with are made up of a variety of different fatty acids and that specific composition varies with each oil and butter and is you know, a huge part of what differentiates them from one another. So the fatty acid composition of mango butter is different from the fatty acid composition of shea butter, even though they're both soft butters. This apparently means soft butter to me. Uh, if you would like to learn more about the fatty acid composition of the oils and butters that we work with, I really like this textbook. I've got a full review of it uh, on Humble Bee and Me. This was a gift, but it's got great profiles of the different you know, oils and butters that we work with, including fatty acid profiles. You'll find that most oils and butters are blends of unsaturated and saturated fats, but butters contain more saturated fats, enough saturated fats that the uh, butter is solid at room temperature, at ambient temperature, you know, that we call it a butter. It's got that buttery consistency. So when we formulate body butters, we are creating a bespoke blend of different fatty acids from a variety of different ingredients. So generally you're melting everything together and then the idea is to cool it to create a uniform product that you know blends all these different benefits from these different oils. But sometimes uh, that blend <laughs> doesn't want to be quite as uniform and blendy as you know as we were hoping. And this is because sometimes those saturated fatty acids with their higher melting points, they decide to kind of jump the queue of solidifying and they look over at like oleic acid and they're like, hey man, you're still liquid, but I would like to be solid now. And so they get together with, you know, they're like stearic acid or palmitic acid friends and they get all solid before everything else does. Uh, so that's what the graininess is. It's bits of uh, fat that have solidified while other bits of fat haven't. And so then we end up with these harder bits in this softer, uh, body of body butter and just, you know, bummer. It also means that the overall formulation won't have quite the right consistency because the hardening power of those saturated fats aren't, you know, isn't evenly distributed throughout the formulation. So you've made a body butter and it's gone grainy. How do you fix it? I have included more detailed instructions on this in the partner blog post, which is linked in the description box below. But the general gist of it is you're going to need to very gently remelt the product and then recool it properly. You want to use a water bath to gently re-melt the product. Ideally, you're not reheating a formulation after you have added essential oils and your vitamin E, but you also ideally don't want a grainy body butter. So if you're just looking to fix a batch, this is kind of the way to go. And then in the future, try and you know do it right the first time so that you don't have to expose your expensive essential oils and whatnot to any more heat than necessary. If your body butter is a poured body butter, I recommend doing that in a heat resistant glass measuring cup. So something like a Pyrex cup made from heavy glass with a pouring spout. And if it is a whipped body butter, you'll want to do this in a bowl that you can you know, whip or re-whip the body butter in. Pop that into a saucepan that has just like barely hot water in it. Like I usually do this on about medium to medium low on the stove. We want the water to be steaming, but not, not like bouncing around and just heat the body butter until it is just melted. The key technique for creating smooth body butters that stay that way is bringing it to trace. So this is a wonderful skill and technique I learned in my Formula Botanica Diploma of Organic Skincare Formulation coursework. And if you are a soap maker, you'll be generally familiar with the concept. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to take our newly remelted body butter and we're going to cool it constantly stirring in an ice bath. You don't need the ice bath, but it certainly speeds things along so you're not stirring for absolutely ever and your arm, you know, doesn't like fall off or something. As the body butter cools, as you're stirring, you'll notice it starts to gain viscosity and eventually you'll be able to pick up your spatula and kind of drizzle the, uh, you know, the body butter that is on the spatula over the surface of the body butter that is in the cup and you'll notice it leaves a trace. The 
longer you cool the butter and the cooler it gets, the thicker it gets and the thicker your trace is going to get. Figuring out exactly how thick of a trace you require for your formulation is definitely a, a feel you will acquire as you do this more and more and more. I usually choose thicker traces for products that include something insoluble that I don't want to settle out, so something like a mica or clay or some starch. And I'll usually choose a thinner trace if I know I'm going to be transferring the butter into some sort of uh, intricate packaging. So if I was going to be pouring it into a mold that had quite a lot of details in it, or if I was going to be pouring it into a tube, I would want to be pouring at the thinner end of the trace spectrum so that it could fill that mold or fill that tube evenly. Once you've poured your body butter into its tube or tin or mold or whatever, the last thing to let it do is to let it fully set up. And your kind of two big choices for this is do you let it set up on your countertop or do you let it set up in the fridge? I have found that some formulations do better with one over the other. Uh, so generally I recommend just doing it one way, just, just choose one, just do it one way. And if it's lovely and smooth, perfect. Uh, and if it's kind of mealy and gross, start over and try chilling it uh, in the other location. If your product doesn't set up at all, you probably needed a thicker trace. So remelt and try again. Now for whipped body butters. Whipped body butters don't tend to go grainy as often as poured body butters, but I have addressed how to troubleshoot a grainy whipped body butter in the partner blog post. So please make sure you're going down to the description box below this video and clicking through to that to learn more. So that's how to fix a body butter that has gone grainy on you. But you know, ideally you don't have body butters going grainy on you, right? Like ideally you want your body butters to be mwah every time. So how can we make that happen? Tip number one is determine the optimal cooling process as part of the overall formulation. So when I'm formulating a new body butter formulation, what I do is I start with just the fat blend. So just the blend of butters and oils and uh, subtle alcohol. And so usually that's upwards of 90% of the formulation. And so I start with just that and I melt that and I work on figuring out exactly what level of trace and exactly how to cool it before I start incorporating more expensive ingredients. So because I don't have any essential oils or actives in there yet, if I need to remelt the base and try again, I can. And so yeah, step one, make sure that you know exactly how to cool each specific formulation. Work that out right from the get-go and include it in your process. Thing number two, once you've made a beautiful body butter, be kind to it in storage because if it uh, has an opportunity to remelt in a hot car or on a hot windowsill or in just a very hot bathroom or something, it's probably not gonna, uh, you know, recool in the way that you wanted it to and things will go kind of cattywampus. So just be kind to your body butters and keep them stored at a ambient temperature that's not gonna make them go all on you. <laughs> Tip three, if you have the option to see if you can reformulate your body butter to be cold processed. So I've shared a couple different whipped shea formulations where we just don't melt the shea butter. And if you don't melt the butter, it doesn't have an opportunity to go all weird on you as it solidifies. This technique definitely works best if your product is already going to be whipped because you know, obviously if, you've, if you're really just like whipping or mashing everything together, you don't have an opportunity to like pour it nicely into a mold because it, it's not pourable. And you'll also wanna check and make sure that any of the butters you're using in the formulation are nice and silky smooth already because again, you aren't melting them, so you're not gonna have a chance to sort of smooth out any pre-existing graininess in the butter if it's, if it's there. If it's there to start with, it's gonna be there in the end product. And then my last tip is to consider reformulating to reduce graininess potential. I have found that the butters that are the most likely to go grainy on me are soft butters. So if you are just having a beast of a time trying to find a you know, tracing cooling combination that works for your formulation, maybe consider reformulating to remove the soft butter from your product. The formulation type where I find this happens the most, for me at least, is when formulating lip balms that contain butters because a uh, lip balm in a little lip balm tube, it needs to be quite liquid to pour it into that tiny little tube, but you wanna bring it to a nice trace so that the butters don't go grainy on you. And then that trace can happen really quickly because 
lip balms typically have a fairly high wax content and wax solidifies really quickly. And so you end up with this sort of, ah, kind of thing. So in a case like that, I would be either reformulating to remove the soft butter from the lip balm, or I would maybe be considering making that lip balm a, like a pot or tin lip balm rather than a tube lip balm. I have also found that including a small amount of a hardening wax in a formulation can really help combat uh, graininess and I think that's because it just really accelerates the hardening process because hardening waxes like beeswax and candelilo wax set up much faster than melted butters do. Including a hardening wax in your formulation certainly isn't a guarantee that it will never go grainy but it's just something I have noticed. It does seem to help. All right, I think that is enough chat about grainy body butter. I can't believe I thought this was just gonna be like a quick little post and a quick little video when I dreamt it up. There is a lot to talk about and there is even more in the partner blog post. So please make sure you check that out. I have linked to videos where you can watch some of these different techniques in action with different formulations. I have linked to great further reading from other awesome formulators. And yeah, there's a lot of great stuff down there. I would love to hear your top tips for preventing graininess in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Please make sure you are checking out humblebeeandme.com as well for heaps of great information. And I will see you next time.